Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another summary video. My name is Muhammad Ran Sapero and in today's video I will be talking about the broadcasting and network security in Next Generation Network. But first of all I want to share with you guys the definition of broadcasting and network security. First of all is broadcasting. Broadcasting can be defined as the distribution of audio or video content to a dispersed audience via any electronic mass communications medium. Typically, one using the electromagnetic spectrum such as radio waves in a one-to-many model. Whereas on the network security, in its simplest term, it can be defined as a set of rules and configurations designed to protect the integrity, confidentiality, and accessibility of computer networks and data using both software and hardware technologies. Next is applying broadcasting convergence into IP-based network. So in order to do that, there are several processes that is needed to be considered, first of all from the enabler. Enabler is a, comp is a company that provides the network infrastructure and related services. So the enabler has to consider the content digitalization and IP-based network and as well as providing the high-speed networks for the 4G, 5G and the FTTH and, and beyond. And there is also needed uh, a convergence, a broadcasting and telecommunication convergence in order for us to apply the broadcasting convergence into the IP-based network. And lastly is from the telecommunication operator, they have to provide contents and as well as transforming audience from passive to active uh, consumers. These are the changes that has been made so far. First of all is that digital broadcasting enables a more efficient use of spectrum and enabling a new audio-visual content provider such as YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Spotify and content provider can offer services directly to all market without gatekeeper and also that government instruments to control broadcasting content are challenged by the new multi-platform and Broadcasting not only becomes more competitive market, but also more international market. Thus, that means broadcasting is becoming a broader market. Next is the comfort approaches to content. First of all is the scope of regulation, the scope definitions of broadcasting services, addressing a number of social and economic interests such as plurality, the cultural diversity, national identity, and standard of decency. And there's also European Union differentiated television, the scheduled and the non-scheduled one. And we need to also uh, uh, ensuring the effective competition where there has to be an equal access to content to provide competitive offers and development of the appropriate technologies and services on the digital dividend spectrum. The government can also start by educating consumers properly uh, in reducing switching costs and simplifying bureaucracy for new players. Another approach is to content is that the spectrum allocation, uh, we need to use the digital dividend and the public uh, interest objectives for content, uh, there has to be a transformation of supervision and the regulation should also consider the changes in the supply of information and programming and the audiovisual service offered by internet providers that simply host the content uploaded directly by users cannot be included in a possible definition of broadcasting service. And lastly is the must carry regulation where the broadcaster must carry the public service channels. Next is the institutional environment. So there has traditionally been a distinction between the broadcast regulators and telecommunication regulators and minimizing the number of regulators that an enterprise needs to deal with is also important in order to minimize regulatory causes and reduce the potential of uncertainty and inconsistency. And regulators in broadcasting and telecommunication have had an important role in regulating dominant market positions. Convergence driven by NGN is clearly increasing the need for better horizontal coordination in regulation of the communication sector widely defined. The next generation network and the network security. So security is a very important aspect in 
the next generation network since IP networks are prone uh, to cyber attacks such as the cyber attacks from internet, email, and applications. Uh, the traditional circuit switches are usually designed as closed protocols in which users have a lesser amount of information on its structure and functioning. Contrary, in the NGN, uh, where it is a IP based which is developed by open protocols, which means that the users have more information on the structure and the functioning. Uh, security is essential for the industry to be reliable and competitive in the global market. A down network can impact to the national economy and the social uh, the, from the social dimension of security, consumers are becoming dependent on information systems and GN should provide a reliable connection anytime and anywhere. Security threats arise from anywhere because the borderless nature of IP networks and ensuring balance between civil liberties and security solutions is a must. An international standard organization collaboration is expected in order to deliver network security in the next generation network. These are the IT resolution x805 on network security. So according to the ITU, there are five possible threats. The all of which are the destruction, corruption, removal, disclosure, and interruption. The destruction is the destruction of information and or network an attack on availability. Corruption is an unauthorized tampering with an asset, an attack or integrity. Removal, a theft, removal or loss of information and or other resources, an attack of an, on availability. Disclosure, unauthorized access to an asset, an attack on confidentiality, and interruption, a network becomes unavailable or unusable, uh, or an attack on availability. And these is the common security threats in next generation network. On the right is the table for the threats and risks for the voice over IP or internet protocols. So, uh, identity theft and denial of service impact on revenues and the ITU recommendation on three security layers which uh, included the infrastructure, the service, and the application. Okay, so that's it for uh, today's summary video. I hope you guys can learn something from this video. I, ho I hope that there is no confusion in my explanation, but if there is, please Common security threats in next generation networks. So here I have included the uh, table for the threats and risks for the voice over internet protocols. And identity theft and denial of service is impacting on revenues and the IT recommend uh, three security layers which includes the infrastructure, the service, and application. So as we can see on the table here, the threat is uh, there are several threats that, that is uh, common security threats in next generation network. So here I have already uh, common security threats in next generation network. First of all, uh, common security threats in next generation network. So. Here I have included a table for threats and risk for the voice over internet protocol. Uh, the threats included the if dropping through interception or duplication, loss, alteration or deletion of content, caller ID or location may not be uh, identified in an emergency, lack of capacity or system management, denial of surface attack, viruses or other malware, and power failure. So identity theft and denial of service impact on revenues and the IT recommend on three security layers that includes infrastructure, service, and application. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys can learn something from it and I am very sorry if there is a confusion in my explanation. So please leave a like if you like this video and click dislike if you dislike this video and as always, thank you for watching.